Hi friends, don't click out. This is a murder mystery and makeup upload, don't worry. First of all, hi. I'm filming from my dark history set right now. And I noticed on today's upload, I did not film an intro. I know, I, I don't know what happened, but I didn't film an intro. So I'm filming it here, my dark history set, and then we're gonna jump to murder mystery and makeup. So don't worry. I'm not trying to like sneak attack on you. Anyways, hi friends, how are you today? My name is Bailey Sarian and today is Monday, which means it's murder, mystery, and makeup Monday. Thank you. If you are new here, hi, my name is Bailey Sarian and on Mondays I sit down and I talk about a true crime story that's been heavy on my noggin and I do my makeup at the same time. So if you're interested in true crime and you like makeup, I would highly suggest you hit that subscribe button because I'm here for you on Monday. Okay, now we're gonna jump back to my room and we're gonna do an advertisement real quick and then get into the story. Great, <laughs> cool. So holidays are coming up. Crazy, huh? This year like flew by. What a year, oh fuck. Anyways, hi. Before we jump into today's story, we do have a sponsor. It's Hunt a Killer. I freaking love Hunt a Killer. Freaking love them. If you don't know, Hunt a Killer is the perfect gift for the true crime fan in your life, or maybe it's a good gift for that person that you just can't figure out what to get them this holiday season. <sighs> There's always one. They have everything or they don't want anything and you're like, I'm gonna give you a coloring book. That's what you're getting. Hunt a Killer is perfect for them. It's the most unique present and they, it will be something that they will actually enjoy. If you don't know what Hunt a Killer is, Hunt a Killer is a murder mystery subscription game that delivers an immersive experience right to your front door. I know. With each delivery, you'll sift through piles of documents, evidence, audio recordings, and case files, eliminating suspects and identifying murder weapons until you crack the case and catch the killer. It's like an escape room delivered right to your front door. Ding dong, who's that? It's Hunt Killer, hey. <laughs> Hi. I received the newest season, which is called like Mallory Rock. Now there's this girl, Beth Ferris Hendricks. She dies, okay, drama. And her sister Gwen is set out to prove that it was a murder. Now to catch the killer, Gwen, she needs our help trying to expose her hometown and uncover the secrets that exist on Mallory Rock. Drama, drama, drama. And I'm here for it. It's such a fun game. You can play with others, you can play alone. It makes a great gift. It's engaging, it's fun. I mean, Give it a whirl. If this sounds like your cup of tea, you can go to huntakiller.com slash Sarian and use code Sarian for $10 off your purchase. Again, make sure to use code Sarian for a $10 discount. If you order by December 15th, you will receive it by Christmas. Big thank you to Hunt a Killer for partnering with me on today's video and throughout the years, I appreciate you. But most of all, I appreciate you guys because without you, I wouldn't be here. And that's a fact. I know I say it all the time, but I really mean it. I don't know why I get so out of breath in my intro. I think because I get nervous. I still get very nervous when I film because it's like, it's a lot of pressure to remember what I'm saying, what I'm doing. And then on top of that, like what kind of makeup look I'm doing. A lot of you think I like pre-plan. Usually I don't. I just kind of wing it and hope for the best. That's how I approach life, really. Wing it and hope for the best, babe. It's all you can do. So. Our story begins in a place called Carroll Stream. It's a small suburb in Illinois, which is about 30 miles west of Chicago. Carroll Stream, this small town, was named after the founder, Jay Stream's daughter. Just a little fun little fact here. When she was young in 1948, she was in a car accident and the doctor advised her father that good news might be enough to wake her up from the coma she had fallen into. Honey, I named a town after you and then hope she wakes up. It might work. Her father, who happened to be like in the business of founding towns for his real estate business, he named the one that he was developing outside Chicago after his daughter, Carol. He's like, that should wake her up from the coma. That will do it. Carol was in that accident in 1948 and she lived all the way up till 2020. That gave her like 72 years of life. So it must have worked, good for her. It has nothing to do with today's story. It's just kind of like a little fun fact. But our story does take place in this super cute little suburb, but it's not a cute story. <sighs> Sorry about that. We're gonna fast forward to 2008, it's 2008. 
welcome. We're gonna start with a woman by the name of Linda Bolek. She was living in Carroll Stream, and at the time, she was 61 years old. She had recently let her son, Robert, move back in with her and her boyfriend. Now, Robert, her son, was 39 at the time, and the reason as to why he moved back in with his mother isn't clear, but, you know, he's probably just going through rough times, something, you know, you get it. So his mother allowed him to move back into her home because he needed a place to stay. This is a side note, but isn't it interesting in different countries, they live with their parents like forever, but it's welcomed. How come in America it's frowned upon? We should do a dark history on that. I'm sure there's something dark about it. Corporations trying to make money, I'm sure, something like that. Well, the two of them, Linda and her son, Robert, now they kind of had a very long history of arguments and they weren't very close, you know? Yeah, not all mothers and sons get along lovingly. They kind of had some, some of their own issues and that's okay, it happens. There were other family members who knew about Linda and Robert's troubled past. Linda's sister even acknowledged that Robert had been a handful, I guess his whole life, whatever that means, you know? And growing up, I mean, it doesn't even seem like Robert's father was around much or at all. Cause when you look, when you dig around into his past, it doesn't seem like his father was around, but that's unclear. On top of his strained relationship within his family, he also was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Now this is a side note, I'm just making it very clear that we are not saying anyone with bipolar disorder, this is a reflection of who they are and this story represents this mental illness. You know, I know we're grown enough to know better, but there are some people who think that I'm making this connection and that shit's dumb. But I'm mentioning it because it plays into the story. Okay, does that make sense? I know you get it. We are grown, we can make that separation. Now it's believed his bipolar disorder went all the way back to when he was a child. Like he was diagnosed back then, but again, it's kind of unclear. But at one point, Robert, he did need to be hospitalized and kept like in a hospital 24 seven, watched by doctors. He just was struggling a lot with his mental illness. Robert moves in with his mom and right away it's off to a rocky start, okay? Yeah. Robert and Linda's neighbors reported screaming matches and arguments happening often and like echoing out into the neighborhood. And it was said that Robert could be difficult and he seemed to have a different kind of hatred towards his mother. He um, was also seen like cursing at her, but there were also neighbors who noticed that she too was not like a little angel. She seemed to be cursing at him from time to time, getting very angry back. Toxic, you could say, but he had nowhere to go. So what does he do? He stays there. So one of the biggest arguments that they always seem to get into over and over and over again involved Robert. He had this habit of buying flowers for all the hostesses at a restaurant that he often went to. Now his mother, did not like that her son was doing that. I don't know if it came down to because he was spending so much money. I don't know, but she just really did not like that. And um, you know, it's kind of sweet, I guess. I don't know. I actually don't know. Cause what if it was in a creepy way? I don't know. But they would get into fights about it all the time is what we're getting at. So one day, Robert and Linda are at home at the condo together. Now, any other day, Linda would be working, but this day she wasn't feeling so hot. She wasn't feeling well, she was feeling real sick. So she decided to stay home. Robert didn't care too much about his mom. So the fact that she's sick, she's not feeling well, he's kind of like, whatever, whatever mom, get better. So, he tells his mom that like he wants to go shopping that day, which to you and I, that's totally fine. Like go shopping, bye. But she, Linda, was his chauffeur. He couldn't drive. So she was the one who had to drive him around. He has a long list of errands that he wants to run, but she doesn't wanna run around town because she's not feeling well. Linda was like, I don't want to go shopping. This is a sick day. It's not like my day off where I'm just lollygagging, having having a, a blast. So she's telling Robert like, no, I, I don't wanna drive you around anywhere. I don't feel well. But Robert somehow convinces his mom to chauffeur him around and go shopping, okay? 
I don't know if it just wasn't worth the fight, but she does. Well, on the way home from running errands, I guess tensions are just running high. When they arrive home, they get into one of their usual arguments. I guess it wasn't like their usual argument because Robert was being very aggressive with this one. Like he had his heart dead set on getting what he wanted and he wasn't gonna take no for an answer and he was just being a little more aggressive. So like, I don't know, something was going on. So I guess Robert's just yelling at his mom. It's loud, it's aggressive. Neighbors could hear it, you know, but it was just kind of like, oh, darn, another argument. Robert just was angry. What was he so worked up over? What was, what was Robert so worked up over? Get this, get this. It was tickets to an Avril Lavigne concert. Oh yeah. Avril Lavigne, remember? Great, yeah. He wanted Avril Lavigne tickets and not just any tickets. Oh, he wanted the Skybox tickets. I mean, he doesn't have money. He needs his mom to get him the tickets. So let's pause a minute. Cause maybe you're like, who is Avril Lavigne? Well, in 2008, let me say, she was riding high on a horse of Avril Lavigne land. At the time, like her most recent album was called The Best Damn Thing. It was a big hit. Um, the song Girlfriend, People loved it. It was on radio stations, every MySpace page, okay? In 2008, she was she was very popular, you know? She's on her world tour for her album that started in March of 2008. And she had a show scheduled for March 21st in a town called Rosemount, Illinois, which is about 30, 30 minutes from Carol Stream. Naturally, Robert's like, I wanna go. I need to go to this show. This will change my life. So after running all the errands, they're at home. Robert really wants his mom to call one of her friends to arrange tickets. Linda refused, but the argument was just heated and wasn't <laughs> stopping. And as the argument continued, I mean, things just started to escalate. Whether or not the tickets were even a thing she could get, I don't know. Like, I don't know if she had some kind of hookup or something. It wasn't said or made clear but he wanted his mom somehow to get these tickets, okay? But what we do know is that the f argument between the two is just not letting up. It's getting very aggressive. There's pounding, there's shouting. And at some point, Linda grabs a knife. At this point, some of the details are unclear, but reports say that she, Linda was holding the knife at the time, but she was also in the kitchen. So she must've been using it she may have been using it for like something else. And then she was just kind of like waving it at him with no intention to like do anything with it, which could be true, we don't know. But other reports say that she pointed the knife directly at Robert and even like held it to his face and threatened to stab him in the eye. However, she got the knife, whatever she was doing with it, it was Robert who made the next move. And that is according to Robert himself, when he snapped. Robert was so furious with his mother that he went over to where they had the alcohol bottles and he grabs a bottle of cognac from like, you know, the shelf grate. And he uses it to club his mother across the back of the head, not once, but twice, okay? And the bottle was full. And if you've held a full bottle of alcohol, of cognac, it's pretty heavy. And like, it's a big boy. It's got some weight. So Linda gets hit. And then she ends up collapsing to the floor. Oh yeah, poor Linda. So Linda's on the floor. She's lying on her chest and her back is completely exposed to Robert. Robert is standing over her with the bottle still in his hands. And he's like, I'm not done, I'm not done. He decides the next step is for him to get some knives instead of the bottle. So he goes and he grabs some knives and he has like one in each hand and he ends up stabbing his mother in the back repeatedly, like literally. Cause normally we're like, oh, they stabbed, it, they stabbed him in the back. It's like, no, he actually like really did. I don't wanna get too gory here, okay? But we know Robert was like really going hard stabbing his mom because he ends up breaking both of the knives he was using and they get like stuck in his mom's back. What are you doing? Oh, for Avril Lavigne? You couldn't just like break in like a normal child. Well, he's 39. Okay, so later on during Robert's trial, the judge in the case described the scene as one of chaos. 
I mean, I could imagine, Judge, I could imagine. So Linda at this point, well, I mean, obviously she's not moving. Um, Robert, who's drenched in his mother's blood, looks around and decides that he still hasn't done enough. Like he wants to do, he wants to do more. So he ends up grabbing and gathering a bunch of like household cleaner items like Drano and insect repellent. And he drenches his mother's body in them, leaving her body on the kitchen floor with like these chemicals just eating away at the exposed cuts and, and punctures he caused. I guess once he was satisfied with his result, he changed clothes and then he headed out. He left the house. We don't know where he was going, but he was, he, yep, bye. So I guess that the whole situation or the whole fight, I should say, was extremely loud because there were multiple 911 phone calls about like a disturbance in the area. So police were notified or al alerted about this, right? And um, so they went out to the house. I guess when the police were alerted about the situation, it was considered like a dis domestic disturbance. Like it's a call on someone who's maybe firing a gun in the air on your street, just like a loud noise or something. But I guess with that, they take a little bit more time getting out there. It's not like super high pri priority. I could be wrong though. But from my understanding, they took a little bit more time. So Robert gets out, right? He leaves, gives him time to leave. So the police said that they'd been asked to do a well-being check on Robert and Linda's home. Now a well-being check is when like you call the police to have them visit a family member, uh, maybe who is elderly, mentally ill, showing signs of uh, negative behavior, not even elder. It could be for anybody that just, you haven't seen them, you're worried about them. Can you make sure that they're okay? So one of the neighbors called and asked if police could do that because they heard the fighting going on and it was like, can you check that everything's good? So um, police are going by the house and they're just thinking that it's a normal wellness check. Like, could you imagine just going to the scene and you're like, oh, we're just gonna see if people here. And then like you open the door and you're like, and you're, that, it's not a wellness check. It's just a full blown murder scene. So police go to the house, they open up the door and that's where they find Linda still on the kitchen floor where Robert had left her. And not only is she drenched in her own blood, but also a ton of like household chemicals. Like what was the goal there? I don't know. So they found Linda's body, right? They're looking around the house, they're getting statements and they realize that she has a son named Robert and he's not at the house. So where is this Robert guy? And I mean, he wasted no time. He got out of there quick. I guess though, which is kind of interesting. I don't know what it is, but it's something because it was determined that after the murder had taken place, Robert, he, I guess had like taken a bath, had some tea, maybe had like a little bit of a cry sash. And then he took off and went shopping. So, um, after murdering his mother, he took a bath and had some tea. Like, are you, are you okay? No, you're obviously not. But <laughs> I mean, wow, people sure are different. They sure are. Mm-hmm. Well, police are on the hunt for this robber guy, right? And they end up searching for him for about six hours, but they are able to locate him. After they found Linda, and in the time, police say that Robert had went shopping at different stores. One report claims that he went to like a bookstore where he bought a book and scribbled the name of a character from General Hospital in it. Which if you don't know, General Hospital is one of the oldest, longest soap operas in the United States. Now, we looked it up. We looked it up trying to get answers here. What was this little detail? And, um, but you know, there's really, there's really no information as to why this name was scribbled. There are multiple sources saying that he went into a bookstore and bought a book, but only one saying that he scrawled something in it, let alone the name of a character from General Hospital. But you know, that detail was kind of fun. I mean, who was the character? What did they, what did it mean to Robert? We will never know. I guess during Robert's shopping spree, he, 
was like calling up a bunch of friends and family and he was telling them like um he was telling them about the struggle he had with his mother now whether or not he was giving the full details not really sure i doubt it because a lot of people uh he called one of them was stan uh his mother's boyfriend and according to stan Robert called him and told him he struggled with his mother after she attacked him with a kitchen knife. So, you know, yeah. Stan told the court later on that he warned Robert not to like harm his mother, but also that he just didn't believe him. He wasn't believing anything he said. He knew something bad had already happened. So six hours after Robert had killed his mother, the police were able to locate him and find him in Schamburg, which is like 12 miles north of Carroll Stream. And how did they find them? You're probably wondering. Well, he called them and told them that, he told them pretty much what he had been telling his friends and family, what he told Stan, that something really bad had happened between him and his mother. And like, that was about it though. He didn't really tell them, he just said something bad happened. It could have been guilt, paranoia, something but Robert turned himself in. Well, he called. He was like, coming at me. So after he makes the call to police, you're probably wondering where he was at. You know, where was he? Where'd they catch him at? And friends, he was at Hooters. Yeah, the restaurant. Police arrested Robert at a Hooters where he ended up um, after his like little shopping spree, he ended up at Hooters. It's not funny, but it's just like, it's kind of fitting, I guess. I'm not sure. Yeah. And no, this was not the same restaurant that he was taking the, the workers uh, flowers to, remember? That apparently was an Outback Steakhouse. Yeah, Hooters is where he was just found. Maybe he wanted some of those buffalo wings. Maybe it was the beer, maybe it was the boobs. But that's where he was at. He's like, if I'm going out, I'm going out at Hooters, okay? So obviously Robert is arrested same day, and he's put in jail on a $2 million bail. So Robert sits in jail up until his trial, which is three years later, which is wild, right? So it's September of 2011, and he is sitting in front of a jury accused of first degree murder. Now, the prosecution had no problem characterizing Robert using all the elements of the story I just told you, but they went even a little further. Prosecutors argued that the strained relationship between Robert and Linda and the frequent like arguments between them were evidence of Robert having planned the whole thing. He was planning it. They called it a killing fueled by bottled up rage and that exploded into violence when his mother denied him the tickets to Avril Lavigne. One of the prosecutors on the case, she characterized Robert to the jury by saying, the defendant was washing something away. He was washing away the problem in his life, his mother. That's really intense for a courtroom argument, but they actually went on showing a side-by-side -side comparison of Linda's face to the jury of like when she was super happy, she's smiling, she's alive. Um, and then they showed next to that, like a picture of her body face down in blood and chemicals. So I feel like that would um, that would traumatize anyone who saw that. But I guess the jury was like, oh wow, yeah, bad. Literally in court, they were like, she gave you life and you took hers and you're guilty of first degree murder. That's what they're telling the court. They even in indicated that Robert had poured all of the chemicals and bug spray on her body because he wanted to humiliate her even in death. Some of you may be thinking like, yeah, maybe that's what he wanted to do. But Robert, well, he came out during the hearing with a very different tone. He spoke to the jury for about 45 minutes during which he claimed he didn't intend on killing his mother that day. Like that wasn't even on his mind. He admitted that he had a pretty rough relationship with her, um, but that he still loved her even though he hated her at times. He seemed very like, Genuine, I guess. He did apologize to the court for killing her, but he admitted that he attacked her immediately when she picked up the knife. And that was when he snapped after 27 years of verbal abuse from her. Now he was 39, so you're probably wondering like 27 years. I think it's like Robert, Robert had only been living with his mother for, I think with those uh, 27 years, he must've been referring to like growing up with her 
Mm -hmm. It's likely he meant the 27 years he spent in the same home with her under the same roof before moving out. I'm sure coming back at 39 years of age maybe brought back a lot of memories and emotions for him. I'm not trying to justify what he did. I'm just saying. Actually, I don't know what I'm saying. So this is where the court and the jury learned that Robert was suffering from bipolar disorder. And not only that, but he had testified that he had been skipping his medicines for like three days leading up to him killing his mother. Now witnesses from his 2011 trial confirmed he had a long history of mental illness as well as receiving treatments for it. So this wasn't an excuse, it, you know. But we don't know, we don't know. We don't know, we don't know, we don't know, we don't know what he wants. This was the basis for Robert's state attorney who argued that Robert's, Robert's mental illness and his failure to take his medication had led to this chaos, yes, but that his actions weren't as motivated by petty desires and simple revenge as the prosecution had, suggest, had suggested. One day I'm gonna talk smoothly. Robert contends that he and his mother had actually gotten into an argument about several things. One topic of which was the concert tickets, yeah. He went on for most of his testimony that it wasn't specifically about tickets. It wasn't just about tickets. Where Robert's defense kind of fell apart though, is where his defense attorney tried to explain that Robert's mother had attacked him with the knife and after blocking the knife, Robert had stabbed her with it in self-defense. But given the level of violence he did to her body and the state she was left in, and the fact that he hit her with the bottle too, you know, the jury just wasn't buying his, his defense really. The prosecution's story was more believable than that. Of course, Robert wasn't seeking to be let go for like what he had done. He wasn't exactly on trial for whether or not he'd done it. No, he was there to be convicted of one type of murder or another, like first degree or second degree. The difference between the two would be whether or not the killer intended to kill their victim or not. The prosecution wanted to get him convicted for first degree murder, which carries like a much harsher sentence, but the defense asked for second degree, oh, uh, like saying it was because of his mental illness and loss of control. The jury deliberated for about two hours on the case before returning a guilty verdict on the charge of murder in the first degree. Agreeing that there had been some motivation of some kind behind Robert's actions, they also determined like no matter what happened, what Robert did to his mother were just cruel and like disturbing, which basically meant that like he went hard, okay? He went real hard. Because he went so hard, the consequences needed to be to fit that crime. The prosecution recommended he get 65 years in prison. The judge in this case made a statement that I think sums up a lot of the thoughts we've had researching this case. In reviewing the arguments from the defense, like it was obvious Robert had a history of mental illness. There's no question there. And the judge even says that, acknowledges that. And the judge goes on to ask the question, what would happen if the defendant were released and on his own? Obviously Robert was dealing with issues far larger than his desire to see Afro Levine. Like he had a history of mental illness that was disrupting his personal and family life. The question seemed to be like, what happens when we don't get people the help that they need? Do you know what I'm saying? Like he's not, it's such a tricky conversation because could this have been prevented if he were able to get his medications? And again, not saying that all people who suffer from a mental illness, um, will end up doing something like this. No, but like if it were easier for him to get his medication, would he not have done this? And if so, like, is this a case, a murder case or more of like, he just couldn't get his medication? I mean, I don't know. I think that's where a lot of people were kind of questioning it. I mean, most people were like, just lock him up. He murdered his mom. In the end, Robert was sentenced to 40 years in prison with no chance at parole. Oh, I didn't even finish my face. Hold on, hold on. I would love to hear what you guys think down below. 
was Robert motivated by Avril Lavigne tickets and that's why he murdered his mother in such a freaking awful way? Or was it something deeper? His mental illness going untreated? And if so, what does that mean? You know, I wish we were a country that just kind of took care of people, their mental well-being better, but I guess I'm just a daydreamer living in a la-la land. So Robert will be spending the next 40 years in prison. And I mean, so he'll be 80 when he's up to get out. <laughs> Anyways, that is the awful story about Robert. Either way, his poor mother did not deserve to die like that, especially over Avril Lavigne tickets, my God, in such a tragic way. I think something a lot deeper was going on with Robert. And unfortunately, we just, we don't have the easiest access to mental health treatment, you know, and something happens, they you can snap and that's it, you know, and then you get freaking thrown in jail forever. Does that excuse his behavior? Absolutely not. What he did was awful, tragic, terrible. He should have never done that. But then it's kind of like, well, maybe it could have been prevented. Anyways, I know today's story was a little bit shorter. I've been doing some long ass videos lately, okay? And um, I thought it was just an interesting story. Trying to, I wanna dabble into those stories that we haven't heard about. Oh, anyways, let me know down below who you want me to talk about next time. But other than that, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. You make good choices and please be safe out there, okay? And I'll be seeing you later. Bye.